So I think we can start. Good afternoon and hello from uh, St. Pölten, where our EcoPlus headquarters is located. My name is Tadar Hassan, and today on our webinar, we have a guest, a tax advisor, Ms. Paula Timofte from Tax Office Artus, and she will introduce us to the Austrian tax system. But before leaving the stage to her, I would like to introduce you EcoPlus, EcoPlus shortly. We are the business agents of the state law Austria, and I am your contact person for expert and relocation service. We help and support Laura Austin companies and their international, high qualified international workers. Uh, please have a look on our website uh, after, after this webinar, and there are very useful information for you. Our services is, is free of charge. So you can contact us if you have any questions about, let's say, if you are a non-EU citizen, red, white, red card from first application to extension to red, white, red card plus for you or for your family, uh, family uh, housing, especially if someone is new in the country or will come to Austria, we show and introduce how to seek a flat, which platform you can use, and also important points of finding a good flat. If you have children, questions about schools or kindergarten, but also topics like uh, health system and insurance. Uh, you can also contact us except those subjects if you have any other topics where we can help and show, uh, show you the way. Our aim is that you have an as smooth life as possible here in Austria and uh, feel, your, uh, feel yourself here comfortable. So please stay tuned and take a short time for the registration to our newsletter. You can find the link in the chat room now for newsletter and please follow us also on LinkedIn so that we can inform you about important subjects and also uh, you get the information and invitation about our events together. Me, uh, myself came to Austria also from another country for 10 years ago. That's why I feel and understand you very well, how it might be difficult to make friends, especially if you don't speak German. That's why we also focus on socializing events. Uh, we organize meetups, once in Amstetten and once in Vienna or Wiener Neustadt in Mons. And we come together with our internationals from different countries, cultures, and language from other companies in the region and share our daily subjects and find solutions uh, and suggestions. We also uh, organize some activities at weekends where you can also participate to, also with your family. We had a trekking tour with a professional tourist guide last year in June in Wachau, and we visited a regional wine house together. Uh, another example is we visited in September together uh, Luxembourg Castle and in December the Christmas market in Schönbrunn and Rathaus uh, Platz in Vienna. Last month we played all together uh, bowling in Pugstad and in Wiener Neustadt. Uh, about coming events, we organized over the end of March two regular tables in Wieselburg and in Vienna. And in June, we plan uh, on a weekend with a short trekking tour. At the end of uh, at the end, we will have a nice wine testing in a beautiful vineyard in Lower Austria. You can also join this event with your family to get the information and for the registration. You will also receive the invitation from us. So uh, you may find here uh, my contact data, uh, details, which you have already received on the invitation, actually. Uh, I don't want to take so much of your time. Today is a tax webinar day, and I'm also excited what Ms. Timofte is going to tell us. Please don't hesitate to write your questions in the chat room. At the end, we will try to answer some of the common questions. And in the following days, you will also receive the presentation uh, with all those questions with answer from us by email. So, Mr. Mofta, first of all, thank you, thank you very much for your time, and uh, the stage is yours. You can take over the control of the presentation, please. Thank you. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we hear you. Perfect. So, I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar on the topic of the employee tax assessment, the Arbeitnehmerveranlagung. And first of all, I would also like to thank Plus for the invitation to hold this webinar today. And furthermore, I am excited about the number of registrations and very much hope that you will be able to take a lot away from this presentation today. Um, I have already received a quite a lot of uh, questions in advance, and I have tried to cover the most necessary information in this presentation. 
Um, and of course, I'm aware that with the large number of participants in this presentation, uh, uh, participants, uh, more questions will come up. So we will have a Q&A session afterwards where any unanswered questions can be answered. However, if the questions are more of an individual nature, I will ask you to email me the questions afterwards so I can answer it, so we can um, cover the most ne um, necessary questions today. Um, so the Austrian tax system is relatively complex, and I'm aware of that especially for those who grew up in a country with a very simple tax system, the bureaucracy can be very overwhelming uh, upon arrival in Austria. And therefore, I hope that I can provide some guidance today. Um, first, on today's agenda, uh, we will have a look at um, how does the Austrian tax system even work. Uh, and I will give you an insight on how to find your way around, uh, bit, uh, around it a bit. Uh, then we will go into the points uh, you all want to know. How can I save taxes and what can I claim in my tax return? Uh, and we will have a quick look um, how to file a tax return. And then I will try to answer a few more questions. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Paula Timofte. I'm a tax advisor at Artus Tax Consulting and I have been working here for five years already. Uh, in addition, I have been self-employed for several years, so I know the tax, uh, tax system very well from both, both sides. Um, okay, now we can start with the general introduction. Many of you have probably already taken their first steps in Austria, so the first steps already start on the bureaucratic way. It is necessary to make a registration confirmation in Austria, and for this procedure you have three days after establishing in Austria or for a month after your first arrival in Austria for EU, EEA or Swiss nation citizens. Uh, in addition, it is necessary to uh, register uh, for tax purposes at the tax office. You can do this via finance online and we will have a look at it later on. This is the case if you have employment income, unless the tax is already withheld for your, uh, from your employer. Uh, income from a self-employment or uh, business income, or you have income from renting. Um, in this case, it is important to inform the tax office about this at the latest one month after starting one activity, so that at least the activity is deposited at the Finanzamt. Uh, if now more than one month has passed, this is not very dramatic, but you, it should be done very soon. Um, when thinking of the Austrian tax system, but also about the international tax system, uh, you always have to distinguish between the unlimited and the limited tax liability. In case of the unlimited tax liability on Austria, the entire world income is taxed in Austria. This means that foreign income must also be included in the Austrian tax return. Unlimited tax liability always applies if a person has his habitual residence in Austria, uh, or his main residence. The habitual resident is always in a country if the stay is longer than six months in this country. And this can be on a voluntary, but also on an involuntary basis. Um, then there is the limited tax liability. This occurs when neither the main residence is in Austria nor the habitual residence. In this case, the person is only liable to tax in Austria on that income that he receives in Austria or where the source is in Austria. And now you may ask yourself why you as an unlimited taxpayer in Austria also have to declare foreign income in Austria. Maybe you have already declared your foreign um, um, income in your tax return abroad uh, and now you don't want to tax it twice. Um, this, of course, is a legitimate question and it is important to know, of course, the individual country have thought about it and, and therefore the double tax treaties were concluded between all of the countries. Each country has a so-called double tax treaty with another country where this is defined exactly uh, what you must pay in Austria, what you have to pay in another country uh, and which country has the right of taxation. Um, if the foreign income is declared to an unlimited taxpayer in Austria, there are two ways to avoid this double taxation. Uh, one, uh, one method is the exemption method and the other is the credit method. Uh, with the exemption method, the income that is taxable in another country 
is exempt in Austria. In this case, the foreign income already uh, only increases uh, the tax base for the tax rate in Austria. This is so-called progressive retention, and we will have a look at it later on. And in the other method, the credit method, you declare the foreign income, but the taxes that have already been paid abroad are credited to the Austrian tax. So it is important to know there is technically no double taxation, even though you may have to make two declarations in two different countries. Okay, um, now we have come to the topic of the tax return. Uh, there are two options for the tax return. You have to file one or you want to file one on a voluntary basis. Um, when do I have to file one? Whenever I had had more than one employer during a year, uh, and the employer is obliged to send an annual pay slip to the tax office by the end of February of the next year. Uh, if you had more than one employer, the tax office will automatically know about it, and in most cases you will be asked to submit a tax declaration. The second case, if you, uh, if you had income from a self-employment uh, ex exceeding 730 euros per year. In this case, you have already notified the tax uh, office that you have this other income, as we heard before, no later than one month after starting the activity. Uh, in this case, it is also obligatory to submit an income tax return. And the third case is when the tax office has requested you to submit a return by a letter. Um, but when do I want to file one on a voluntarily basis? Whenever I want to claim expenses that my employer could not take into account by the current, in the current payroll. Uh, and that would, of course, bring me a tax credit. And also, if I have income from my self-employment, but it is less than 730 euro per year, then I can voluntarily submit declarations. This would make sense, for example, if you have a loss from this activity, since this loss would perhaps reduce the assessment basis of the total tax burden, and maybe you could get a tax credit out of it. Um, since the year 2016, the tax of, uh, office also frequently sends out simplified Austrian tax returns without applications to taxpayers. This is a simplified method. Uh, with these returns, the tax authority calculates any tax credit that could be obtained from the return. The tax authorities then suggest the potential tax credit if uh, no tax return has been filed until June of 13th of the following tax years. We will go into the dates uh, and the filing deadlines a bit later on. Uh, if you have um, just an employment income and it is based on records and it is assumed that neither expenses or special expenses or extraordinary burdens would be claimed. If you get this, you still have the possibility, uh, the possibility to file a tax return yourself within five years. Um, so um, the tax office will then calculate another credit. Um, let's assume that you have already submitted the tax return now for the year 2020 or 21 and learn in today's presentation that you might still have certain expenses to claim. Uh, in this case, it is not very tragic if from the date of the tax assessment, not even a whole year has passed. In this case, it is possible to file a corrected return within one year from the date of the last tax return and claim another expenses. Um, the income tax of an employee is called wage tax, it's the Lohnsteuer. Uh, the wage tax is the tax that is withheld by your employer and paid to the tax office for you. Um, the deadline for submitting an employee tax assessment is five years. Um, so this year in 2023, you can submit the years 2018 to 2022. Um, yes. Um, in Austria, we have the so-called um, progressive tax rate. This means that it's a pay-as-you-earn system. The more that you earn, the more that you pay tax, of course. Uh, you only ever pay tax on final income. That means that you pay tax on profits. A tax credit can always be then obtained if you have also paid taxes in advance. This means that you have to have a certain income. Um, in the next slide, I will show you the Austrian tax rates, and you will see that for the first 1,000 uh, 
euros uh, to be very uh, specific 11,000 euros now it has increased to a bit more 11,600 euros I think uh, no tax has to be paid this is in Austria the so-called existential minimum but if you don't have so much income now that a tax is paid from which a tax credit can be received then in exceptional cases there is the so-called negative steuer um, this is a tax credit that arises from paid social, social insurance contributions. So, uh, on this slide now you can see the Austrian tax levels. Uh, as you can see there has been some changes in the last few years uh, and there was an effort to adjust the Austrian top tax rates uh, to ease the burden on the middle class. You can see that uh, we have the um, tax rates 20, 30, now uh, 30 percent, 41 percent, 48, and will be reduced by 20, um, 24 um, another time. Okay. So now we have already come to the most important points of today's presentation on the subject of expenses. Um, it is important to understand that you have to distinguish between job-related expenses and private expenses. Um, job-related expenses are always deductible because they are directly related to your income. This means that whenever expenses are incurred um, that uh, are not already reimbursed by your employer, which is very important, you can deduct them. Uh, during the presentation, we will have a look at many expenses or of uh, at many examples of expenses that are deductible. In the private sector, however, expenses are not deductible. However, in order to be able to grant this existential minimum, this livelihood minimum, you can deduct certain expenses also from the private area by law. Um, the first expense we will have a look at is purchases over 1,000 euro. Acquisitions under 1,000 euros are also deductible, of course, but they can actually be deducted in the year of expenditure. If one buys now, for example, a laptop, which costs over 1,000 euros gross, uh, it is, um, and it is not replaced by your employer, then this laptop is to be written off over the so-called useful life of the laptop. Um, the Austrian government is oriented to the German AFA Tabelle. However, this is only a guideline. So if you now can prove that a particular tool, your phone or whatever can be used even shorter, uh, this can be written uh, off at a shorter period of time under certain circumstances. Uh, written, can be, uh, writ written off can be, for example, uh, work equipment, a computer, a tablet, all the things that uh, you have to purchase for work. Uh, perhaps also very important for you is the issue of double household costs and home travel. Uh, whenever the family lives too far away, uh, whereby too far away for the Austrian government has been defined by 120 kilometers, uh, and the daily commute would be too difficult, the cost for a second home which you uh, take so that you don't have to drive back and forth every day can be deducted from um, tax. Um, cost for an, an Adequate living for rent can be taken into account as well as running costs. Uh, alternatively, you can claim the depreciation of an apartment or a house, uh, whereby the depreciation period is to be calculated with 1.5% uh, of the acquisition value minus a property share. Now, this is a bit of a complicated uh, calculation, so if you have any questions about that, uh, please contact me because it is very individual. Uh, it is also possible that hotel costs up to a maximum amount of 2,200 uh, euro per month can be written off. Also expenses for the most necessary furniture which are necessary for adequate living can be deducted. Uh, also deductible are the trips home. Uh, this home travel cost can be deducted up to 306 euro per month. Unfortunately, uh, it is not possible for an unlimited period of time. So the government assumes that after a certain time that the family would follow. In principle, one can argue with the duration and certainly why this would differ. However, it is assumed that for singles up to six months is adequate and reasonable and for couples and families up to two years. 
Okay, so the home office. Um, also deductible are the costs of any home office. There are various things that can be deducted. Um, since COVID-19, there is the so-called home office lump sum, the home office pauschale. Uh, this is a lump sum that is intended to replace the cost incurred to the additional burden you have at home, the, co uh, the cost, the additional costs. Uh, this lump sum can already be taken into account by your employer in the payroll on an ongoing basis. Uh, and it is tax free up to three euro per day and for a maximum of 100 days uh, can be taken into account per year. This means that a maximum of 300 euro per year can be taken into account. Now the employer has the option, for example, to pay you only one euro per day. Um, so if this is the case, you have the option to put the difference in your tax return as an expense. Uh, in any case, costs incurred for the purchase of er uh, ergonomically suitable furniture, the ergonomisch geeignetes mobiliar, uh, uh, can be deducted. Examples can be a swivel chair, the desk lighting, or the desk itself. Uh, all that is needed to set up a home office at home. Uh, the requirement for this is that at least 26 home office days are worked at home. Now, your employer must take into account the actual home office days in the ongoing payroll accounting. So these are then transmitted to the tax office with the annual pay slip. Uh, now it is possible that your employer does not record your home office days correctly. In this case, the employer would have to correct the annual pay slip because otherwise you wouldn't be able to deduct this cost uh, for the furniture, which would be a pity. Um, since the year of 2022, this is very new, there is the also so-called Teuerungsabsetzbetrag, uh, which is intended to combat the high inflation. I couldn't find a translation for it. Uh, the aim of this deduction is to support families uh, and individuals with low incomes. Um, so the amount is available to every taxpayer up to an income of 24,200 per year. And this lump sum is 500 euros. Uh, which is negatively taxable. Uh, you do not have to specifically apply for this amount because it is automatically taken into account by the tax office. Uh, furthermore, there is the so-called commuter allowance, the Pendler Pauschale. The commuter allowance is an amount that should cover the cost of commuting from home. Uh, there are different um, amounts, as you can see on the slide, uh, we distinguish between a large and a small commuter allowance. It is also important on how many days per month you have to commute to work. In principle, the commuter allowance is already taken into account by your employer if you applied for it in the current payroll. If this is not the case, you have to request it. I have put a link here in the slide, the Pendler Rechner, where you can calculate it. Um, when this is not taken into account by your employer, um, it can be taken into account, but maybe not in the right amount. In this case, you can use this link, which uh, you can find here, and uh, calculate the actual commuter allowance you are entitled to. Uh, you can also calculate the commuter allowance uh, and submit it to your employer, and then he would have to take it into account, and you don't have to wait until the end of the year to uh, uh, declare it in your tax declaration. Um, I'm now just thinking maybe um, the, the, the Pendler Pauschale, the lump sum, also can differ which time you have to travel to work. Let's just say, for example, you travel, uh, you have to go to work at 8 and you come back uh, at 4 p.m. Then there is a, a, a Pendler Pauschale. Uh, let's just say uh, you have to travel to work uh, for a night shift. Then the Pendler Pauschale, the lump sum, could differ because, for example, no bus would drive in night. So uh, maybe uh, it should be uh, you should um, take this in uh, the Pendler Rechner and look, uh, have a look at it, uh, which is the sum. The job ticket. Um, since first uh, first of July 2021, the employer can also provide the so-called job ticket, and it is tax free. Um, the entitlement to the commuter allowance, so this can be granted um, tax-free, is a requirement. Uh, alternatively, the employer can reimburse the cost of a weekly ticket, monthly ticket, or annual 
ticket tax-free. Um, it is important to know that if this is granted tax-free by the employer, there is no longer um, an entitlement to the commuter lump sum. The only exception to this is if the job ticket does not cover the entire route, so you can claim a commuter flat rate for the difference route. Uh, what could probably also be relevant for many of you is the deductibility uh, of moving expenses. Uh, if all of the conditions are met, you can claim the cost of moving to Austria. Uh, the requirements are the move uh, has to be directly um, linked to your um, uh, job here in Austria. Uh, all receipts and the expenses must be available. In addition, it, is um, it was a necessity so that you can perform the new job. Uh, and the move will shorten the way to your work by a lot or uh, you come from abroad to start a new job in Austria. If you declare this and other costs, and there are a lot of costs coming up, then the tax office may ask for receipts for moving costs. It is important to know that the tax office has the right to request receipts for all of your costs that you uh, put in, in your tax return. Um, therefore, it is important that you keep all of your receipts for at least seven years. It is also possible that the tax office will ask you for a proof that the move is related to your work. Uh, in this case, a um, service contract can serve as a proof. Um, examples of duct uh, deductible costs can be the transport of furniture to the new apartment, the costs associated with packing these things, uh, uh, cost for a real estate uh, agent through which you found a new apartment, then cost for further rent payment. Oh, um, do you still hear me? Now we hear you again. Okay. Just <laughs> Hello? We hear, we hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so um, for example, if you had to move to Austria and you had flight costs or you had uh, costs uh, for coming to Austria, this can be deducted. Um, it is always important that this cost has not already been reimbursed by your employer in any way. Um, other deductible costs may include mileage allowances, for example. You can always deduct these if you had to make business trips as part of your, if, uh, part of your employment. And of course, not reimbursed by your employer. In this case, you can deduct 42 cents per kilometer. Um, to calculate the route, Google Maps is very suitable. Always take the shortest route and back. Likewise, costs for further training can be set off. Uh, for example, further training for the existing job can be set off, also language courses for learning the German language, and in addition, further training for a complete new job. Uh, in this context, it is important to note that mileage allowances can be also be deducted for travel to possible locations. For example, if you had to travel um, to a venue two or three times a week for a training course, then the travel times to the venue can be deducted with 42 cents per kilometer. Um, also deductible are costs for professional literature. So if you have to buy books in order to find your way in working life or to just educate yourself, the cost can be deducted. Um, as a tax advisor, um, I of course have to mention that our costs for the consultation of the tax uh, advising can be completely deducted from tax. Uh, likewise, also consulting costs in connection with a lawyer can be deducted if it concerns the possible employment, for example, your employment contract or the termination of an employment relationship. And finally, in certain cases, if these costs are not already taken into account by the employer, uh, in the ongoing payslip, social security contributions can be deducted. Okay. Um, we now come to the point of tax credits. It's called Absetzbeträge in Austria. Um, these are amounts that can be deducted directly from the tax. There are several costs here. There is the transport deduction with it by, uh, 400 euro per year is the Verkehrsabsatzbetrag and it is automatically taken 
taken into account by the tax office. You do not have to declare it in your tax declaration. Uh, this amount is used to um, travel uh, to replace the costs incurred for journeys from home to your work. Uh, for example, you have tank costs or parking costs. These costs are already covered with this credit for transportation costs. So let's just say you are working um, in, in Baden, uh, like I do, then uh, you have a lot of parking costs. Um, you cannot deduct them additionally. So this lump sum is intended to facilitate exactly these costs. In addition to the Pendler Pauschale, there is the commuter euro with two euro per kilometer and it's automatically taken into account. And then there are still certain deductions for single earners or single parents. So um, it is a requirement that the partner has earned no more than 6,000 euro per year and at least has, um, seven months of the family allowance of the Familienbeihilfe uh, was received. Um, also, the costs for alimony can be deducted. The amount of it's an amount of 29.20 euro up to 58.40 euros per child and um, per month, and this can be written off. Now to the family bonus plus. I've received some questions about it, and I tried to go a bit more into detail. Uh, this is an amount intended to compensate for cost of children and children can be very expensive as we all know. Uh, the family bonus plus is a tax credit and deducted directly from your calculated tax. So the requirement for this is that the family allowance is received in Austria uh, and if a compensation or a differential payment is granted by the tax office in Austria, this can be also considered as the receipt of a million Beihilfe. Um, who is entitled to the Familien Bonus Plus? Um, the family benefit recipient, uh, Familienbeihilfebezieher, um, the spouse, the person obliged to pay alimony, and the new partner or marriage partner if no alimony by the old partner is paid. Um, since the family bonus, as I told you, is a deduction cost, at least uh, enough tax must be paid to allow the family um, bonus plus to be deductive. Uh, what does this mean? If one spouse does not earn enough to pay this tax, uh, so th that this tax can be credited, a 50-50 split makes sense. Or even furthermore, um, one can apply for the full family bonus plus. Um, you can apply for the Family Bonus Plus um, with your employer, so it can be considered in your um, ongoing payslip using the form E30. And um, if this is not the case, then in your employee tax assessment via Finance Online or in paper form, we will have a, we will have a look at it later on. Um, how much is the Familien Bonus Plus? It's 2,000 euro per year per kid until the 18th birthday and 650 euros per year per kid after the 18th birthday, as long as the Familienbeihilfe is granted, for example, if um, the kid is um, going to study. Okay, so now uh, we come to the point of extraordinary expenses to extraordinary burdens. Um, this is, as mentioned before, an expense which is to be counted to the private sphere, but can be claimed by law as an expense. Uh, you must uh, distinguish between um, expenses on an excess amount basis, so you have a Selbstbehalt, or on a full basis, on a Selbstbehalt. Um, this must be applied for separately in the tax return. Um, the special expenses uh, with retention, so with Selbstbehalt, um, can, for example, be expenses for illness, for dental costs, adoption costs, for child wishes, the cost of a funeral of a close, uh, close relative. Uh, the amount spent on these expenses must be must exceed the Selbstbehalt, um, and only then it makes sense to um, uh, take these costs into consideration because it wouldn't uh, make any difference if you uh, put these costs in. Um, this, uh, the cost without deductible, uh, without the Selbstbehalt. Uh, this can, for example, be cost for um, elimination of a natural disaster, cost related to a disability, or for example, special diet because of a disease. 
Um, and last but not least, I would like to mention that there are certain tax benefits for researchers and inventors. Uh, what are the requirements for this? Uh, it's that the center of vital interest is moved to Austria. Uh, the center of vital interest was outside of Austria for the last five years. That the relocation to Austria is in the public interest. So uh, usually the tax authority decides if, it's, if it is in the public interest. And that the work scope is dedicated to research and experimental development in Austria. What is the so-called tax benefit? It's a tax allowance of 30% of the taxable Austrian sourced scientific and research uh, income. So only the income that you declare from uh, this, um, this source is uh, with the allowance of 30%. And the allowance is granted for up to five years. Uh, important is that you must file it within the six of within the uh, first six months after the move to Austria, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to be granted um, this tax benefit. Um, so we are approaching um, the end of our presentation and we'll be soon moving to our Q&A session. But before that, I would like to talk a bit about how to even file a tax return in Austria. Um, we heard quite a bit uh, of what expenses are deductible, but now it's time to fill it out in practice. Um, there are several deadlines for filing in a tax return in Austria. The deadline for filing a tax return in paper form is April the 30th of the following year, unless you are represented by a tax advisor. Uh, the deadline for submitting a tax return online is June the 30th of the following year. Um, if you are represented by a tax advisor, the tax advisor has the option to submit the tax return by March of um, 31st uh, of the second following year. So the tax advisor can submit the declaration much later because uh, to handle all of the clients. And the voluntary tax return, you have five years to file. So now in 2023, you can file 2018 to 2022. How do you file your tax return? Um, the easiest way is via Finance Online. Uh, for this, you need to register for the first time. Um, I will show you a screenshot on the next slide um, on how to do this and how it looks like. Um, and you have the option to um, submit the tax return in person in paper form. Uh, there are several apps as Taxify and Steuer app. They will help to guide you through the uh, tax return and um, somehow is a guidance and of course you can contact the tax advisor we can help you to uh, do your tax return or even file it for you um, on this slide now you can see what the main page of finance um, looks like you can log into the finance online with several options as you can see three different options um, however uh, in order to be able to log in for the first time you need to register uh, you see that uh, under the three um, possibilities to log in, you have the uh, yes, registration first and registration. Also, there is the possibility to start a demo version uh, at the Finance Online, so you have a bit of an idea how it would look like if you log into it. Um, if you have not registered and logged in for the first time, you will see this screen here. Um, here you see uh, the start page and the last five years. So you see the um, Steuerjahr 2017 to 2021. This is the old version. I used the demo versions to make the screenshot. And um, you can now see um, the start page. Uh, you can see whether a tax return has been submitted, whether the tax file is in process, uh, whether is um, processed by the tax office and maybe it has questions and uh, then you will see it here. Uh, and with this tool, you can safely manage your tax returns at any time. Um, if you now want to create your tax return, then you come to this mask where you are carried through each and every point that we talked today. So you have your personal data, you have the extraordinary costs, you have the uh, expenses to put in, you have the possibility to put in a recalculated Pendler Pauschale. Um, so here you are really guided through each and every point that we have talked today. 
Um, if you are filling out your tax return and you feel overwhelmed, you can of course contact us. Uh, you will have my contact details in the slides later on um, and uh, I can help you and guide you through um, this tax return. Uh, if now everything is completed, then you can save the data and perhaps return later. You have also the option to pre-calculate the result. And then you can already calculate the possible tax credit. Uh, in the pre-calculation with the calculation sheet, you get an exact statement of how the income tax return would look like. So you can all do this without still filing a return. Um, for example, you can enter the data and only a few days or few weeks later bring in the declaration. Uh, the declaration is sent to the tax office only when you press the send and the, uh, send and check the declaration. Uh, it is also important to know that the tax office has up to six months time to process a tax return. So should you therefore wait for a tax credit, um, you may have pay, uh, you will have to have patience. Um, on the last slide, I put in some uh, useful links. Uh, you can here file your tax return. You have some general information for foreign citizens. Uh, you also have an English homepage of the Austrian Ministry of Finance. And uh, there, every year there's a textbook for, with the most uh, um, important um, information for the uh, employee tax assessment of the um, last year. Um, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. I hope uh, you're not um, overwhelmed with all of this information. And uh, should I have left any questions unanswered, uh, please feel free to contact me. And uh, I think we can now uh, start the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Mr. Mofter. We have some questions. Maybe you can try to answer some of them from the chat room. Uh, Shall I read you or would you yeah. like to? For example, extraordinary burden. How is this uh, self behalt calculated? Is the last um, question. The self behalt is a certain percentage of your overall income. So, for example, if you have an income of, let's say, um, 30,000 euros, there is a, a certain percentage. And uh, if this percentage, for example, uh, I think up to 12% can be the service per heart, uh, only when this service per heart is exceeded, then this cost can be taken into account. Okay. Thank you. And the next question is, can the cost of the consultation for the purpose of the skilled researcher benefit be deducted from our taxes regardless of whether it is successful? Uh, yes, of course. Yes, uh, every cost uh, in this uh, area can be deducted. A question which I have to answer. Yes, uh, this meeting is going to be sent to you uh, with the presentation next week. No worries. Mm -hmm. uh, when paying taxes in your EU, uh, European home country due to a, st a stable income not related to work, you pay less taxes in Austria. How should that be re registered? Um, I didn't get the question. Uh, I, I didn't hear it very well. So, um, Sorry. When, paying, when, pay, when paying taxes in your EU home country due yeah. to a stable income not related to work, you pay less taxes in Austria. How should that be registered? Um, so if you're moving, uh, do you, uh, is the person already moved to Austria? I guess, yes. Okay, so uh, this is uh, where I said you have to distinguish between limited and unlimited tax uh, liability. So if you have your residence here in Austria, all of your income, even the abroad income, has to be uh, taken into consideration in Austria. So um, this means that if you have income abroad, uh, it depends on what the double tax treaty looks like. So if it's the credit method or the other method, so um, you will have to have a look at it. Uh, it depends on the country. Okay. The next question is from Valerio. I have uh, started working in September 2022 and can I ask for a tax return this year since as far as I understand, I am paying more taxes than what I should. 
Um, so you started in September. So if you started uh, working in September 2022 um, and you are now taxable in Austria, you can make a ta tax return for that year. Um, so um, in 2022, you have to register via finance online uh, and um, then you can put in all of your income. Your income already should be um, uh, registered at the Finanzamt from your employer and they will recalculate your taxes. Yeah. So if there would be a tax credit you would get back, you can calculate it on um, the uh, 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 finance online. Um, what I'm now thinking of, let's just say you're putting all of the information in, in finance online and there uh, maybe uh, there is uh, calculated that you would have to pay taxes back. You do not have to declare it. You do not have to push submit the declaration uh, if you have uh, to pay taxes unless you are uh, requested by the Finanzamt to do so. Thank you. And another question is uh, what determines the chances of success when applying for the scientist relocation benefit? Um, so this is, uh, you have to apply it by the Finanzam. So the Finanzam will have a look at it. Uh, they will have a look at it, uh, uh, what it, what the scientific work would be. And then you would get the so-called Bescheid. So um, they will tell you uh, if it is in the public uh, eye uh, relevant. Another question. Does the cost of moving from abroad to Austria, first time in Austria, count as move cost tax benefits? Um, so uh, if the moving to Austria is related to your work in Austria, so you had to move to Austria and you didn't do it on a voluntarily basis because you like Austria so much, then you could uh, count this as moving costs. If you did it on a voluntarily basis, you would have moved anyways and uh, then you can't deduct these um, costs. Uh... Another a little bit long question from Federico, my friend. In case the company moves and I have the right, uh, I have right to tender partial, is this granted and provided in the salary from the first month, or must it be claimed in the following tax return? Mm -hmm. Um. So this is the first question. Um. Uh, it depends on if you told your employer to consider it, because uh, when you um, calculate your pendler pauschale. Um, you have to tell your employer to take it into account. So if you if he didn't do it from the first month, you would have to uh, have a look in your tax return to see if he considered it from the first month. If not, then you would get it back in your tax return. Okay. From Denise, I paid for moving the flight tickets in US dollars. Can I just convert it in euro? In which fields mm -hmm. would this go? Okay, so uh, this is like I said before, your move has to be connected to your um, uh, to work in Austria. Uh, if you paid it in US dollar, it's no problem. There is a link. Um, I can provide you the link for the um, uh, UMB, uh, Österreichische Nationalbank, and there you can for each and every day get a, um, a US dollar euro um, conversion, and you should convert this in euro. Yes. Okay, maybe a few questions more. Uh, scientists that moved to Austria more than six months ago and didn't register for the tax return cannot get the return even for the next year? Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you register uh, via finance online for the first time, you can there put in when you move to Austria. So maybe you have the possibility to um, make the tax return from the moment you have been living in Austria. So that would be no problem. Okay, another question. I'm just trying to choose some interesting questions. We are not yes. going to lose all the questions and we will be not able to answer all the questions today, but in the following days, you will get them uh, replied from us. How should the profits from the investments be filled for the taxation? Does the virtual profit only increase value of stocks, not cashed out? Profit count as the taxable profit? Mm -hmm. um, so, um this is a very good question. If you have investment, it depends on which investment you have. For example, let's just say you have uh, stocks or you have NFTs or you have uh, crypto, you have to declare it. But it depends on which uh, investment it is because there are several tax rates. I didn't put it in my slides because it's a bit, a bit more complicated. And I would ask you to write me an email so we can have a look at it because um, um, 
when it, we talk about uh, bitcoins and so on, it can be very complicated in Austria because we have now a new uh, law regarding these uh, investments. To again. Uh, another interesting question. If I have money in savings accounts abroad and they generate less than 100 euro per year income, do I have to declare uh, it? Is there any lower limit on foreign income for it to be necessary to be declared? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have any other income than your employment income, up to uh, a profit of 730 euro per year, uh, you do not have to declare it. Um, but this 730 euro is an overall um, uh, profit for all of your income. So let's just say you have an income from, um, uh, I don't know, investment or for renting. This is all put together. And if it doesn't exceed the uh, 730 euros, you do not have to uh, declare it. But if it does, you would have to declare it in your tax declaration. Another question is from Ali. For third-person tax benefit researchers, should the qualification of researchers be at least PhD or research, researchers working towards PhD degree may also be eligible? Um. Uh, I'm not sure about this. Uh, I will have to have a look at it. I think the PhD uh, degree should be eligible, but um, it very depends on whether the finance um, uh, qualifies you or not. So um, this is not uh, something we can really um, tell you if it would be successful or not. Uh... Another question, I just moved to Australia later to work and don't have a car yet. So mm -hmm. I have rented a car mm -hmm. uh, for house hunting. Is the cost of the rental car deductible as house hunting under moving ex expenses? Yes. yes, of course. Okay. All of uh, the well, yeah, please. All of the costs uh, connected to that is uh, deductible. Uh, assuming the following. Hypothesis. I'm a EU citizen living in Austria and I am taxed for my income worldwide. I am receiving uh, 3,000 euro from a rental property, but I paid already 500 of taxes in my home country. If my salary, for example, 30,000 here in Austria, should I add this remaining uh, 2,500 euro in my tax declaration? Um, so uh, this, is, this applies also if you're... Um, um, uh, taxable in Austria, you have to declare your um, abroad income from renting, even if you declared it in your uh, home country. So it also depends on which country we are talking about or which method is applicable, because either you can just exempt it, you will not have to declare it in Austria, or uh, you would have to declare it and then the uh, 500 euros you paid in your home uh, country would be um, uh, deducted from your tax you would have to pay in Austria. Okay. I'm just looking for some other questions. Mm -hmm. But as mentioned, we are not going to lose the questions. We will reply them uh, from the chat room. I will take all the questions. But I don't see any other new questions. I think. Um, I, th I, I saw uh, more questions about the Klima bonus, and we also get these uh, questions uh, quite often in our tax office. This Klima bonus, you can Sorry, yeah. uh, <laughs> exactly the, the Klima bonus. You can't. Um, uh, you 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 can't uh, tell the financier to pay you out. This is an automatic um, credit, and you will just have to wait for it. Unfortunately. Uh, Do you see any other question which you would like to give an answer now? I'm just looking over it if I saw something. The last question is also interesting for you. Can I ask question per uh, per email? Uh, so, uh, how can uh, people contact you if they have questions related, uh, okay. tax related questions? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the best and easiest way to uh, contact me is via email because this is my to do list and I will, of course, answer it. So, this would be very practical for me. Okay. You, uh, everyone can see uh, the, uh, the, uh, the email address of Paula Timofte here. Exactly, p, uh, p point team of the at artus.at. Maybe 
two, three additional questions. If I paid any loan like educa education loan or home loan in my home country, can I claim in tax benefits here? Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, it, I think it depends. Uh, it depends on if it was for your actual work here and if you had any tax credit in your home uh, uh, country for it. So I will have to have a closer look at it. Next question is from Sabrina. How to apply for the research, research tax benefit within the first six, uh, six months? Uh, it's, uh, you can apply um, uh, at Finanzamt. Uh, um, you have to do it you can do it online and in person, I think. Okay. Is there any criteria to do the tax declaration by authors or use an advisor? What do you um, advise? There, yeah, <laughs> there is no criteria. So if you uh, think you, with all of the information that you got today, that you uh, can do it by yourself, you can, of, of course, do it yourself. Uh, if you have more questions or you think there might be some costs and you're not sure if uh, they are deductible or not, you can contact a tax advisor and uh, many of uh, our clients, for example, just have, uh, uh, they want to do it by a professional. And what about donations? Are yeah. donations included uh, anywhere in tax? <laughs> uh, donations can be included, but only, only if the the, uh, um, the person you are donating to is registered at the Finansam. So they will have to register. And if they are registered, they will automatically send the donation um, confirmation to the Finansam. So you can't declare it actually in your declaration because it has to be declared. Uh, if this let's just say you donated 30 euros and it is not declared you can call there and uh, usually they don't declare it because they don't have your birth date they need your birth date uh, and they um, will declare it afterwards and then you would get the tax credit from it afterwards uh, yeah. the same applies to the church tax or uh, only when the church tax is um, uh, registered at the Finanzamt from your church, then you can claim it back. So you can't claim it actually in your return. It has to be claimed from the institution. Uh, any benefits for married people? Um, the only benefit is, uh, like I said, the Align uh, Verdiener Absatzbetrag. If one of the uh, partner doesn't earn more than 6,000 euros a year, then the partner who has to uh, provide for the family or for the couple um, has the right to claim a certain amount. And this is the only benefit you have in Austria. Um, yeah. Mr. Braunstein, if I return to Austria in August, 2022 is there any chance to apply for the church ex uh, person exam exemption beyond the six months period um it depends of if uh, your your return if you uh, uh if your stay was longer than five years abroad then i think you can't apply another one because uh there has to be a five-year period you didn't uh you uh, were not in austria an interesting question for everyone uh, about German language course, exams and certificates. Is there any tax deduction? Pardon? About German language exam exams and uh, cert certificates. Yes, they are deductible. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the interest paid towards personal loan deductible is no longer. You had the chance until the declaration of 2020, uh, you had the possibility to uh, declare your personal loan for your apartment, for example. This is no longer possible, uh, unfortunately. Maybe the last question from Vinay regarding married couple. Uh, for that, we need to have children. No, no. Uh, there is the Allein Erzieher Absatzbetrag and the Allein Verdiener Absatzbetrag. So if you have uh, children, uh, then you um, so you don't have to have children for that. Okay, uh, I need to read the questions from Nicole and Pedro, but it's very difficult to find them.
text consulting itself can be also deducted. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm just trying to find the questions from Nicole and Pedro. But maybe I lost them because there are many questions now on top of the list. That's kind of sorry. But anyway, uh, sorry. The clear when the finance sums, the uh, Werbung kosten under which which field? Um, it is uh, a field called Werbungskosten. Maybe it wasn't in the screenshot, but if you log into the finance online, you will have a point that is called Werbungskosten. It's a uh, kosten uh, regarding your employment. Okay, another question here. Is there a limit to how much can be deducted? But if we have enough to claim all the tax, all the tax that we pay. Um, it depends on which uh, uh, expenses you claim for certain exams, uh, expenses, like I said, for example, for the um, uh, ergonomically suitable um, mobiliar, there is a limit for uh, some cases, there are limits, but to other cases, for example, for, our, um, I don't know, training courses or uh, like that, there is no limit. So. You can declare it all, <laughs> but you, uh, the finance will still have uh, a lot of questions about this, so you will have to prove maybe your costs. Regarding proof, from a question from Ruslan, is the bank transaction to Koreans acceptable as a proof in case of if you don't have any physical receipts, or is there any alternative that you can offer? Um, mm -hmm. I think it would depend. So. Um, all of the costs that you, um, uh, if you have the prank, uh, bank transaction, it can serve as proof, but it depends on who is uh, what, uh, who is um, uh, the person that is in charge of your tax return at the tax office. So, for example, if you have one person that uh, is very strict, maybe uh, he or she would say that is not acceptable. You would have to certainly argue. Uh, maybe it is possible to still get a receipt, but I would. Uh, I will. I would try it for myself. Uh, about health expenses, if medical procedures were done outside of, of uh, EU country, uh, that is uh, no problem. But it has to be. Um, um, so, uh, how do you say it in English? Uh, you, uh, a doctor has to uh, uh, has. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, the, uh, you would have to have a prescription for it. So. Okay. You. Related to costs related to returning to family home, could this include costs returning to our home country? Um, so if you are moving from Austria back to your back home to country, um, these costs are not uh, deductible. Okay. Work for, from Elena, if I work for one week and earn 300 euro, so there is no tax. Does it count as Gehalt auszahlende Stelle? Uh, so this Gehalt auszahlende uh, Stelle, you would have to declare at the finance online. Uh, if the um, employer send a pay slip to the uh, Finanzamt, then it is a Gehalt auszahlende uh, Stelle. So you would have to say it's two. Um, so let's just say uh, you work there for uh, one week, you got 300 euros, and then the other half of the year you worked somewhere else. These 300 euros would be added to your overall income and the tax would be um, um, calculated from your overall income. So maybe you would have to pay tax on this 300 euro as well, even if you don't pay it in advance. I'm just trying to catch the next question. That... Um, I saw an interesting question, uh, which is also very important. Internet costs in home office can be claimed 100%. Um, no. So if you have any, uh, <laughs> if you have any costs you have at home, or let's just say, for example, internet, or you have your uh, private phone you use also for your work, you can't claim 100%, but you can claim a certain amount. Uh, you would have to deduct your, it's called in Austria, Privatanteil. 
Uh, and uh, the finance sum, you can argue how much the Privatanteil is. Usually you would have to prove um, how you calculate the Privatanteil or your uh, work um, um, ratio, uh, but I think at least 60% can be deducted. Next question is from Alexander. He lived in the United States during his PhD for about a year, and the cost of uh, his flat in Austria was not paid by the employer. Mm -hmm. uh, is it deductible? Um, yes, I think so. I lived in, uh, let's just uh, read it again. <laughs> mm. Uh, it depends on uh, your flat in Austria. Did you have to have it? Um, uh, why did you have it? So we will have to have a look at it. Uh, in, um, maybe it is deductible, but I'm not 100% sure, so I would have to have more information about this. What about meeting family travel costs if the family resides also outside Austria? Exactly. These are the home travel costs um, I talked about. So if you're working in Austria and uh, you have to uh, visit your family, but it's your, it has to be your um, um, direct family. So your marriage partner or your children, then you would, uh, you could declare it not um, meeting your family, your parents or something. You can declare that, but uh, you're uh, visiting your partner or your children. You can declare that. And what about Sending uh, money every month to the family outside of the country. Can it be deductible? Mm -hmm. um, I think not, unfortunately. Uh, so if it's uh, more of a private nature, you're sending uh, money to uh, relatives, that is, that is not deductible. If you can argue that, for example, your family um, needs this money because uh, they were, for example, in Turkey where the uh, earthquake has been, then maybe it's deductible as extraordinary expense, but not in a regular basis. So I think we don't have any other questions after one intensive hour. Thank you very much to Paula Timofta from Artus and everyone who took time for this interesting and difficult topic. Uh, you have the contact details of Paula for your specific text questions. You can contact her directly for all other subjects and questions. Just contact us at ECA Plus. We will do our best to help and support you and suggest you solutions about your issue. And thank you for your time again and have a nice Thursday afternoon and after work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paula. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.